Hi, this is Jay. Welcome to Bright Ideas. Learning has something to do with memory. If we can't remember from what we have experienced, we will never be able to learn anything. For example, one morning, you are introduced to a girl named Shalin. That same afternoon, you see her again and say something like, You're Shalin. We met this morning. Clearly, you have remembered her name. Memory is crucial in learning, and the stage theory proposed by Atkinson and Schriffen in 1968 argues that information is received, processed, and stored in three different stages. This theory has also been described as the information processing approach. The sensory memory receives information from various sources like the visual, auditory, smell, touch, and taste, and the brain will only focus on information that has been attended to. For example, we normally are not aware of the sensory properties of stimuli or what we are exposed to unless we are asked to specifically identify such information. People are more likely to pay attention to information that is interesting or important to them. Sensory memory is very short and lasts for about one-fourth second. Information that is attended to is encoded into short-term memory known as STM. Encoding is transforming information received into a form that can be deposited or stored in memory. A striking feature of short-term memory is its very limited capacity. To keep information active in STM, you must do something to it. For instance, when you look up on a phone number, you repeat it over and over in your mind in order to maintain or to retain it until you have dialed the number. We keep information active by hearing it either by repeating it, known as the maintenance rehearsal, or give it meaning by relating it to something we already know, known as elaborative rehearsal, to prevent it from fading from STM. Information that is encoded and rehearsed is stored in long-term memory, which consists of information that has just happened a few minutes ago or as long as lifetime. It has been said that all you have learned and experienced in your lifetime is stored in long-term memory. Nothing is lost. Long-term memory has unlimited capacity or storage area. When you are unable to recall from long-term memory, it is the result from a loss of access to the information rather than from a loss of the information itself. It is there but can't be found. That is, poor memory may reflect a retrieval failure rather than a storage failure. Failure to find your car keys does not necessarily mean it is not there. You may be looking it in the wrong place, or it may simply be misfiled in your brain and therefore inaccessible. Research has identified that successful retrieval from long-term memory is enhanced when the information is properly organized and the context in which you retrieve the information is similar to the context in which you encoded it. For example, at a meeting you met various professionals, doctors, teachers, journalists, and accountants. When you later try to recall their names, you would do better if you organized your recall by profession. Who were the doctors I met? Who were the teachers? And so forth. A list of names or words is far easier to recall when you sort the words into categories and then recall the words on a category-by-category -category basis. Organization improves retrieval, presumably by making memory search more efficient. Information is stored in long-term memory as a network and the more we elaborate on it, the more you will remember. In other words, the more connections that are established between the new information and what is already stored, the greater number of retrieval possibilities. Information in long-term memory is usually encoded in terms of its meaning. Memory can be improved by making meaningful connections between what is known and what is new.